everyone. Welcome to another episode of In the Workplace. I am April Yue, the Chief Research Editor at the Institute for Public Relations Organizational Communication Research Center. Today, we are privileged to have Dr. Sophia Fu as our guest. Dr. Fu is a faculty member at the School of Communication and Information at Rutgers University. She is a highly accomplished scholar, having published in top communication journals and won awards from the Academy of Management, International Communication Association, and National Science Foundation. Her research is motivated by one question, which is, how can organizations more effectively catalyze organizational and social change? Thank you so much for being here with us, Dr. Fu. Thank you for having me, Dr. April Chen. Of course. Uh, so today I wanted to discuss your recent publication in communication research, uh, which is entitled Navigating Multiple Identities for Positive Change Through Organizational Listening, which uh, you co-authored with uh, Dr. Da Jiang Wu, Catherine Cooper, and Melanie Questel. This piece uh, immediately caught my attention when it first came out last month, I believe, um, because the subject of organizational listening uh, is really a key area of focus for both scholars and practitioners in our field. Um, so I wanted to um, uh, start uh, our conversation today by asking you if you could uh, explain the concept of organizational listening for us um, and what are its key components as outlined in your study. Okay, thank you. I if I forgot to mention that. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to um, to being here and to being uh, featured in this episode. Um, so to st start answering your question for organizational listening in this research and also in my research program in general, I focus on the listening communication practices of an uh, organization as a whole entity, as opposed to, for instance, interpersonal. Um, listening among employees within organizations. So I focus on the organizational level, how a single organization as a whole entity listens to their stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So um, in that regard, in this research, we define organizational listening as um, the communication pra practices and um, dynamics that's beyond simply uh, soliciting feedback or hearing what stakeholders say, but it's really proactively and effectively um, assessing, uh, acknowledging, understanding, considering, and also uh, appropriately uh, responding to and acting on these diverse stakeholders' uh, feedback, their inputs, their suggestions, comments, and even uh, complaints. So for stakeholders, um, we focus on uh, organizations, both internal and external stakeholders. So these may include stakeholders such as employees, um, donors and funders, their clients, um, their beneficiaries, um, the regulators, their collaborators, and so on and so forth. That's a great answer. I really like the fact that you incorporated you know, you're not just uh, collecting the feedback, you're also analyzing it and trying to incorporate that into the decision making uh, mm -hmm. that follows. Uh, that's great. Um, so your research uh, made a connection between different organizational identities and their listening practice. Specifically, you made a distinction between uh, the normative organizational identity and the, the utilitarian organizational identity. Could you first clarify the differences between these two types of organizational identities? Absolutely. So uh, one of my, um, the, the focus of my research is really um, the focus on organizations hybrid or multifaceted identities, which I which we suggest that each organization has multiple uh, identities. Mm -hmm. So in the context of my research, uh, that is nonprofit organizations, we suggest that um, each organization has both the normative and utilitarian identity. So for uh, normative, it basically means uh, organizations 
focus and uh, propensity to create social value, to be socially driven, to uh, build community, um, to create social impact that um, serve and benefit the whole society and communities. Um, so that's normative identity. So for utilitarian identity, it really focuses on uh, organizations' goals and efforts to um, create economic value, to um, to be driven by profits or to create um, profit to sustain their organization to be financially uh, healthy. Um, so that's what the utilitarian identity uh, is for. So if we use more uh, plain language, it basically is the um, the the blending of their social and business identities. I see, I see. Um, so I have a quick follow-up uh, on uh, identities. Um, mm -hmm. Could you discuss how, uh, according to your findings, these two different organizational identities influence the way organizations listen to and interact with their stakeholders? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, before I really unpack the, uh, the differential impact of the normative versus utilitarian identity on the organization's listening practices, I think it's important to first emphasize that um, one of the first key findings from our research is that organizational listening is critical to elicit positive organizational change. And um, in the context of that, we then also found that these different um, aspects of an organization's identity would shape and um, lead to different types of uh, organizational listening practices for organizational change. Um, mm -hmm. More specifically, we found that um, organizations that are um, more driven by their um, normative or their social mission identity, um, they would be um, engaging in more holistic, systematic um, listening practices that is involved both in their practical motivation to improve their organizations, um, building a positive listening culture, and also including active collecting information, analyzing the information from stakeholders, and acting on these feedback to elicit positive organizational change. So in summary, um, organizations that are more driven by social mission, um, normative identity, they are more likely to be engaged in these systematic, um, effective organizational listening practices. On the contrary, organizations that are more uh, driven by the uh, business aspect, or they are more guided by the utilitarian identity, they are more likely to have the motivation, they are motivated to listen, but their um, listening practices may not be actualized in um, in information collection analysis or um, really in cooperation or acting upon the diverse um, inputs and feedback from stakeholders. So sometimes this may mean that organizations that are more driven more by business identities, they are more likely to engage in more symbolic um, mm. listening practices. So they may send you surveys to say, what do you think? Do you have any feedback? That, but they may not analyze them systematically or really take them into their feed, um, their actions or changes um, seriously. I see. Thank you so much for that detailed explanation of the differences and the impact mm -hmm. of that uh, the two different organizational identities on listening. Um, since you mentioned that um, uh, you studied organizational change as an outcome uh, in this study, uh, I want to follow up on that as well, uh, just for a little bit. Um, so in your study, you focused on both the potential for change and um, the actual implementation of organizational change. Um, could you share a little bit of insights uh, on how and why effective organizational listening can foster positive organizational change? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So first, I would just talk a little bit more about the two um, variables or two, two aspects of organizational change that we measured from the our surveys of organizational leaders. So first, the potential for change, we basically 
ask them how likely do you think you would be changed, uh, be engaged in change, uh, organizational change based on stakeholders feedback and inputs. And for the actual implementation of their changes, we ask them to estimate the percentage of um, changes that that's happened in the past several years um, that is a result of their stakeholders feedback, complaints or suggestions. So these are one is more like their more subjective perception rated on a scale of one to seven. And the other is more like an estimate of the quantity, the number like 20% or 30% of the changes were happened because of our organizational listening effort. And to answer your um, the other question that you raised, why organizational listening is critical for, um, for positive organizational change. Um, so in um, we base our um, research and ground, really grounded our research in um, some uh, disparate lines of research in organizational le learning, um, knowledge management, organizational communication, and some other areas. And what these um, different literatures point to, to is that um, organizational listening is really related to the ability and the capacity of organizations to um, collect new information from their stakeholders and to really learn from their stakeholders. So in that regard, you know, learning from your stakeholders is really the source of change, especially positive change, because you are responding to their requ their requests. You are um, responding to some new um, needs and demands in the external environment. So uh, that's why we consider organizational listening as critical to organizational change. That's fantastic. And uh, my last question is sort of tied to what you just said. Um, so at IPR, our mission is to uh, connect public relations research with uh, public relations practice. So my uh, final question for you is uh, that I'm curious about the practical takeaways um, uh, that your study has. Uh, based on your findings, what would be your advice uh, to uh, for organizations who work in you know nonprofits, leaders in nonprofits, in regards to organizational listening. Mm -hmm. This is a great question. Uh, I I know many of us are um, we are um, you know passionate about academic research, but we also care about translating our research findings into practice, into uh, informing the society, and into informing. Um, uh, you know, public policy. Um, so for our research, I think there are a couple of key takeaways for organizational leaders like nonprofit practitioners, but also just organizational leaders in diverse sectors and industries in general. First, of course, we found that uh, organizational listening is critical for eliciting positive organizational change and um, possibly at the uh, longer term for social change. So. What this means is, as we um, unpacked in the research, we encourage organizational leaders to take in the streamlined, holistic processes of organizational listening, which involves actively um, and effectively uh, soliciting feedback, incorporating these feedback, analyzing feedback, uh, and then really acting on um, these diverse feedback and suggestions into uh, organizational decision making and operations. So that's one of the key first key findings. The other key findings um, or the other key takeaway I would say is the, um, the importance of building a positive organizational culture for organizational listening. So a culture is really the collective, you know, the, the normative norm of an organization. So where everyone may value listening, may uh, take seriously, uh, employees or donors or their clients' feedback. I think fo um, fostering a positive um, um, organizational listening culture that values listening really makes a difference. And the third um, key takeaway actually emerges from our interview findings. I know for many organizations, especially for um, 
nonprofit organizations, many of them are small organizations that are constrained by resources, and they may have limited human or financial resources to engage in listening, which they think may only involve like surveys or focus groups or interviews or town hall meetings or board meetings. But actually, what we found from our interviews with 40 nonprofit leaders in the United States suggests that these listening can be um, small actions or it doesn't have necessarily have to take a lot of resources. So I'll give a couple of examples that emerged from our interview findings. Mm -hmm. So the first example, uh, I remember this nonprofit leader, they mentioned um, basically something like, listening it doesn't have to be about surveys or analyzing these data. It can just be when a client coming to a food pantry to get food, just engaging in uh, casual chat with them, asking them how they are doing. And just, you know, these informal uh, casual talks can make a difference in terms of uh, hearing what stakeholders are doing, how they want to see improvements or changes in the uh, organization services, programs or products. And the second thing um, that I think was really interesting from our our um, our interview data was beyond just you know listen through ears or through the the text the 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 the, the text that um, these um, stakeholders send us. Um, nonprofit leaders also mentioned that listening can be through um, observing people's um, actions. So when you are in the board meeting or when you are in the workplace, maybe purposefully, you know, be mindful and paying attention to what and how your employees are doing, how your donors are reacting and observing people, clients who come, come to your organization and seek help, how they are doing and what things they might be um, um, helpful for them. I think these two examples really demonstrate that organizational listening doesn't have to be um, expensive or entail a lot of resources. And of course, for larger organizations, you can always use uh, surveys, focus groups, uh, use social media and ask uh, or ask your stakeholders to submit um, comments, feedback through the websites, or even um, AI. I know some AI are also good for, um, you know, soliciting feedback from the stakeholders um, if your organization has more resources. Wow, I love that. And thank you so much for that uh, very detailed and elaborate uh, practical advice uh, for our audience. I'm sure that uh, many of them will find this very constructive and valuable. And I like the fact that you're, you said that listening is definitely not confined to spending money on surveys and focus groups. I'm sure a lot of you know, smaller, medium-sized organizations would appreciate that insights. Um, Dr. Fu, I really appreciate your time and valuable insights uh, you've shared today with me and with our audience. Um, to our audience, I want to thank you all for tuning in, and we look forward to having you join us in the next episode. Thank you for having me.